off in 10. New Jersey. And seven of these throughout uh, community. Community. It's defined as a group of people coming together for a specific similarity. But today I'm going to be talking about true community in Christ. When we turn to Acts 2, 44 through 47, it says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued together and met in the temple courts. As they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. Mm. And so this is what true community is. Harmony. Here, do we see any sort of division? Do we see exclusion or isolation? No, in fact, the only thing seen here is Christ himself. You see, the key to a true community is a reflection, a reflection of Christ. And so think of Christ when he walked on this world. He was loving, he was caring, he was forgiving, he was compassionate and comforting. He held those that he loved accountable, regardless of the situation, because he loved them. And even then, if we turn back to Acts, it says, they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. And so there's that sincerity leading to a praise for God, having him at the center, ultimately glorifying him. And so in true community, we should always glorify God. But unfortunately, not all communities are like this. False community. Manipulating something beautiful into something ugly. So I'm going to be talking about two types of false community. Exclusion and isolation. And so I want you to picture this. Christ at the center as he should be, and us outside. What happens in false community is we remove Christ from the center and place him aside, and we become the very center. What happens there is we choose right and wrong. We choose who comes in and out. We choose the very foundation. And so, for exclusion, maybe someone similar to myself comes along, and because of that, I'm going to bring up <coughs> and disregard everybody else, also disregarding their relationship with Christ. Let me take another step forward. Maybe somebody in my, in my life has hurt me, and because of that, I'm going to cut off anyone associated, anyone similar, and ultimately that very person at the very end of the day. Once again, completely disregarding their relationship with Christ because it's in my decision, because I'm at the center. And you might say and argue, that's a natural reaction, and I 100% agree. But since when were us as Christians, the people of God, supposed to follow our natural reactions? Isn't it about self-denial, sacrificing our needs and wants, ultimately glorifying God? And so, us as Christians in this walk, we're supposed to walk in this dark world and shine light on Jesus, not blend in with the darkness. And so when we walk in that fellowship, we need to reflect off of Christ, like I said before, in true community. Next thing is isolation. What would you do if everyone you loved, everyone you cared about left you? You were all alone. Maybe get angry, feel afraid, feel anxiety or depression. That's a natural reaction. And maybe for anger, you feel like, I'm angry. And because of that, I'm going to leave, and I'm going to leave into isolation. I'm afraid, filled with anxiety. Because of that, I don't even want to be hurt again. With depression, I, I mean, there's no point. I'm filled with all this feeling of giving up. That's your reaction. And he puts us one step back, and, and one step back again, until we're ultimately in his trap and his grasp, and we're vulnerable to all sorts of things. Listen, not all types of isolation is negative and bad. It's, it's when we're all vulnerable to all sorts of things of the enemy. In fact, Christ himself fled into isolation to meditate. But it's when we're in that moment. And so to the one in isolation, to the one in that feeling of vulnerability, look to Christ, because not only did he go through what you went through, but he loved enough to put himself in our shoes. He went above and beyond. And that's what I love, that he loved enough. He was, he was pushed around. He was persecuted in all sorts of ways. He was cursed at. He was left alone. And ultimately, he was put on the cross. He sacrificed himself. Because he loved enough. He loved enough. And so, when you're in that moment, when you feel like you're about to let go, rejoice in the fact that he loved. And so, true community. It's all the word. And, in fact, Deuteronomy 31, 6, back to the isolation, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of him. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you and forsake you. He will never forsake us in that moment of isolation. You'll never forsake us in true community at the end of the day. And so it's all in the word, directing us, ultimately having a genuine connection with Christ, bringing his genuine love into our lives, spreading that genuine love with each other, ultimately making beautiful harmony. 